Hello everyone, welcome back to Monarch Mom DIY. I am Cindy and I am so glad that you are here today for this next video. Today I have four spring farmhouse decor DIYs made with items mostly from Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart, Hobby Lobby maybe a little bit. So I hope you are ready. Grab yourself a cup of coffee or whatever you'd like to drink, depending on what time of day it is, and sit back and enjoy these DIYs. Before we get started, let me say if you are here for the first time or for some reason have not subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also hit the bell notification so YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. With all that being said, let's get into today's DIYs. For today's first project, we're using two of these straw wreaths from Dollar Tree, some florals from Walmart and Dollar General, some of the burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. I did not end up using that um, wide burlap. So the first thing I'm going to do with this brown burlap ribbon, burlap type ribbon from Dollar Tree, is I'm going to attach it here with some hot glue and then I'm going to wrap it around the wreath. One roll will not go all the way around, but that's okay because I want a little bit left at the bottom of the wreath, a place where I'm going to attach the florals. And it's much easier to attach the florals when I have the exposed straw. And you'll see what I mean because it gives me a place where I can poke the ends of the floral stems into the wreath just so they are easier to attach. So here I'm taking, these are big eucalyptus bunches from Walmart for $2 each. I'm just cutting each of the stems off from the bush, I guess it would be called. And I kind of have an idea in mind of what I want this to look like. Um, so I'm just poking the stems into the wreath you see there, but I am going to try and cover up all of that exposed wreath as much as possible. Um, so you can't really tell that it's there once the florals are all put in. So this part I always enjoy because you're never quite sure how it's going to turn out until you actually make it. These stems I showed in my haul, these I found at Dollar General. They had these green and yellow ones and they also had like a green and kind of purplish one. Um, but I decided to go with this for my wreaths. These will hang on my two white plastic shutters that you saw possibly in my Valentine decor home tour. I plan on changing those wreaths out with each season. So like I said, I made two of these wreaths. They're not exactly identical, but very, very close. I hang them with this burlap and lace ribbon on front of the shutter. And here you can see how they look hanging on those white shutters in my family room. My second project will be a garland for my fireplace mantle. I'm using some spring colored chalk paint, The chick and egg wood shapes from Dollar Tree and some heart shapes that I had along with some gingham ribbon and these flat back pearls that a subscriber sent to me. So here I'm just laying out my wood shapes how I am wanting them arranged. I'm just going to glue these to a jute string. I decided I wanted the egg in the middle. I'm doing the hearts between all the eggs and chicks and I have 
two chicks on the left facing to the right and vice versa. I decided to use this chalk paint in the color Maze to paint all of the chicks. I wanted this garland to be more spring rather than Easter, so I chose not to use the bunny shapes. I don't know, I just decided to do birds and eggs with the hearts. I am using chalk paint in the color Pool for the three eggs. And then I'm going to use Celery, which is the light green, for the hearts. Altogether, I believe I used three of the eggs, four of the chicks, and six hearts for my garland. Okay, so here you can see how I have the shapes laid out. Now I'm going to take a length of the jute twine. This egg is going to be in the middle. So I'm simply going to make some hot glue on the back and hold the twine there until it is attached. Um, I'm going to try and get each of the shapes evenly spaced out on my jute twine. I believe I have also seen at Dollar Tree, some of these, um, they're called color or paint your own wood ornaments. I believe I also saw rabbit shapes, maybe even carrots. So possibly if you wanted to make more of an Easter type theme, or if you just like rabbits and carrots, you could do this same idea using those two shapes rather than the birds and the eggs. I didn't show these flowers at the beginning because like most of my projects, they kind of develop as I go along. I decided that it was a little plain, so I was going to add just a small flower to the center of each of my six hearts. And then I'm going to use those pink pearl, um, I guess they're flat back pearls that Amy, one of my subscribers, sent me mm. in a little note in the mail. Here they are. And they do have adhesive on the back, but I did go ahead and add a little dot of hot glue just to make sure they were not going to fall off. So each of my six hearts is also getting one of these pearls in the center of the flower. So still thinking it was a little plain, I did take some of this, I believe it's three-eighths inch uh, black and white gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I had enough to cut about, oh, I think six strips. And then I had a wider one I'm not sure where that one was from, possibly Dollar Tree. Anyway, I decided just to tie these in knots between each of my wood shapes, and I really love how it added a little bit of that farmhouse touch to this and covered up the jute twine and really, I think, finished off this garland. Here it is hanging on my fireplace, giving you a couple different angles, and I, again, just love how this turned out. This will stay up all spring. For my third project, I am finally attempting a truck. I have seen these all over YouTube. I had these two from Dollar Tree since Christmas and decided to give it a try. I'm also going to use some florals, um, some printables from Google, and these furniture sliders. You'll see how I use those here in just a second. So taking my two trucks from Christmas time at Dollar Tree, I'm removing the staples, I'm removing the Christmas tree, of course not throwing it away because I may use that uh, come next Christmas, and there were some little nails kind of left in it. Um, and I decided I was going to try and take off these fender pieces, but it was going to break. So I did use some wood glue to get that back on. You do need two trucks for the project I'm going to make. Um, you will paint the front of one and the back of the other. 
If anybody knows some great tips on how to get the glitter off of these things, please, please let me know in the comments. I tried sanding it, and then you'll see in a second, I tried using some Goo Gone. I got it off mostly, but you could still kind of see where it was a little raised. So let me know if you have any tips on removing the glitter from these signs. So here are my two trucks all ready to be put together. I decided to give my truck more of a neutral color scheme in case I wanted it out um, other times than just spring and Easter. So I am painting the body of the truck with the darker gray called Elephant. I'm going to leave the tires black and white, obviously, and then the little raised pieces, the fender and the cab, I'm going to use mineral, which is a lighter gray. So you can still kind of see the Merry Christmas at certain angles. Here I'm taking the mineral, like I said, the lighter gray, and painting around the cab of the truck, and I will also do the two raised fenders around the tires. So from my second truck, I was able to remove the cab and the fenders because I realized that the outside of the other side of my truck is going to need to be this backside. So um, to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to just paint the entire thing with the elephant. Once that is dry, I will um, paint around where the circles for the tires would be with black and then um, also attach the fenders and the cab that I have already painted with the mineral chalk paint. I will also say that when I put this truck together, the, um, the two inside pieces of the truck, so the back of the first one and technically the front of this one, I just painted solid with the elephant chalk paint just so it's inside is more uniform. So these pieces will get glued on now where the fender and the um, cab are so that they will match the other truck just pointing the opposite way. So here you go, we're gluing everything on now so that these two sides of my truck will look the same. Originally, I was going to try to use my transfer method, but because the elephant was so dark, it didn't show up. So plan B, I pulled out my collection of letter stickers, and I'm using these letters here to spell the word market. And then I am going to uh, freehand the best I can the fresh flower and color those in with a white Elmer's paint marker that I purchased at Walmart in the paint aisle. I decided I wanted the other side of my truck to say something else, and I will admit I did not get these letters or this word centered perfectly in the side of the truck, but this side is just simply going to say farm in this other font of sticker. So here is how the two sides of my truck look. I can have fresh flower market out or farm. I wanted something dimensional for the tires and I found at our local dollar store these furniture sliders and I thought they were perfect to hot glue to the center of the tires. They were in the color scheme and I think looked great. 
Thank you to the viewer who told me about these mini crates at Michael's. I had been waiting to find them at Dollar Tree and just was not having any luck. So I actually went on michaels.com and I was able to order them. They're regularly 99 cents each. I ordered um, about eight of them and they were even having a sale. So I got them for about six something and was able to just go pick them up in the store. So you saw me hot glue that one to be the bed of the truck. This one I am painting with the elephant chalk paint. This is going to be like the front um, part of my truck, like where the engine is and all of that. So I want it to more blend in. Um, I did leave the other one, the plain wood color, just for some variety. And then this one, again, will be the front part of my truck. So it will be painted elephant. I also took some paint stir sticks from Home Depot or Lowe's, I can't remember, and I cut some lengths that are the same width as the crates. And you're, you'll see here, I'm just going to hot glue a few of them like to the back um, bed of the truck here, and then one going down from there just um, to be kind of like a rear fender. I really just drew a line and cut these as best I could with my utility knife from Dollar Tree and then just sanded the edges so that they would fit in there. I'm also going to use two at the front here. Once I get my crate glued in, again, this is the front hood area of my truck. I'm just lining it up this time upside down as opposed to the other one at the back that is more like a trunk where you can put stuff in. So I'm just trying to cover up that space there between the two crates, so making kind of like uh, a seat. I didn't worry too much about this being realistic looking at the front because it will mostly be turned to the side and then one more piece here to cover up that gap. I don't even know if I glued this one in because it was wedged in there so tight. And I am loving how this truck looks. Now I'm going to, for spring, just add some little bits of florals. Um, the great thing about the slats in the bottom is you can kind of poke the flowers in there um, to hold them in and you don't see the ends because it's covered up by the truck. So you can fill this with whatever florals you would like. I just pulled some spring colored florals that I had on hand and kind of filled up the back of the truck there. Here you can see it sitting in my front room on the little table. So, so cute. I love, love, love it. And here's how it turned out. And remember again, the other side says farm. For my last DIY, I am using some of these wooden rolling pins from Dollar Tree, some of their glass containers, some pebbles, and these wood circles. I also found this Easter garland at Hobby Lobby that I'm going to use. So I don't know if you can find these at your Dollar Tree, um, but I took two of them. One I kept the same length and then the other other one I cut at about four and seven or eight inches, probably eight. Um, just had my dad cut that on his saw. Um, these round wood circles you can get in packs of four at Hobby Lobby for $3. I found mine at a thrift store. I am going to paint six of them with this moss chalk paint. It is a little bit of a darker but still light spring type of green. And we are going to make our own wooden candlesticks. For the rolling pins, I decided to use my mineral chalk paint, which is that light gray. I do like having a little bit of the neutral colors in my spring decor, but then also adding a little bit of pop of color, which is that moss green. So these, I only gave them one coat. Um, it goes on pretty light, but it, it does dry just a little bit darker. 
and then we will get these candlesticks put together. I would, I will say that I did also paint the backsides or the bottoms of the wood circles as well. Once all your pieces are dry, you can use a little bit of wood glue. I will say I used way too much. You can use less. And I just eyeballed it to try to get the candlestick or the rolling pins um, attached to the center of my wood circles. And I made sure to let those dry for at least two or three hours before um, attaching the other piece. So I will have one that is about six inches tall another one that's about maybe 10 and then 14. so rather than keep them plain you could keep them plain if you wanted i decided to take this easter little garland um, regularly 2.99 it was 40 percent off and i will wrap a little bit of this around each of my candlesticks i thought just this little addition made such a huge difference on these candlesticks. I think they're absolutely adorable and it just brings in a little bit more color, a little pink, a little yellow. I think there's a little bit of blue and maybe a little bit of purple. So for spring and Easter, I'm wrapping these with this Easter garland. To finish off my candlesticks, I bought three of these glass candle bowls from Dollar Tree and three bags of these light blue pebbles. I thought these were a great color for spring and Easter. And I'm just setting in here a little um, battery powered tea light. You could use whatever candle you would like. I probably would have wanted the votives, but they were out. And here's how my candlestick trio turned out. I absolutely love them. Again, thanks so much for watching, you guys. Please let me know in the comments. As always, I like to hear what your favorite DIY was from this video, what you think you will try to make, and how you will change it for your decor. Here are some other spring farmhouse Dollar Tree decor DIYs for your enjoyment. See you next time. Bye.